Hey everybody, it's Beverly again, and today I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience uh, getting this beautiful girl right here, Gretchen, and um, I've given her a full name. She's a seeing eye dog, and I got her at the Seeing Eye Institute in Morristown, New Jersey, and she comes already named, and I was thrilled that because she's a German Shepherd, that she's got a pretty German name, Gretchen. But there's a little story behind that in that one of my very good friends who sent a letter of reference for me to apply at Seeing Eye, that's part of the application process. Um, her name is Martha. And I've known Martha for 20 years and she knows me and so she was happy to send a letter of reference but when um, I received Gretchen and I texted everybody back that I've got this beautiful shepherd, uh, she's, got, she's got long hair and she's got these pretty little soft ears that fold back unless she's really on alert and then they stand up. But right now they're folded back. Um, anyway, when I texted uh, the, the very, very close people to me, my immediate family, and uh, of course, of course, uh, Martha, that I had received Gretchen, I found out that Martha had a history with the name Gretchen. And uh, I, I thought it was, it, it's just really, it's just really ironic um, that uh, Martha and I met at a, um, a nonprofit uh, organization that takes care of the impoverished in our area and we both worked there she was one of the founding members and uh, I worked with her side by side night and day uh, day to weekend and she's just a very very dear friend but before Martha was a wife and a mother and had a family and now a grandmother uh, she had decided to go into the convent as a devout Catholic. And uh, the name she was given as she was um, in the convent was Sister Mary Gretchen. And I thought that is so ironic because I've never known any Gretchens. I've never had a friend named Gretchen. Uh, I've never had any acquaintances named Gretchen. I thought it was a pretty name. And, uh, and so then when I got Gretchen from Seeing Eye, who uh, is just a beautiful shepherd, and I was thrilled that she had such an appropriate name and, and easy for me to, to work with name, um, I was absolutely astounded when Martha told me the backstory. Of, of her name and that once she went into the convent her name was changed from Martha to Mary Gretchen. So now in honor of her um, I have named Gretchen Sister Mary Gretchen and uh, and that's real important because you know how when you get in trouble and your and your uh, your mother calls you and I know when I was a kid and my mother would say, Beverly Ann, get yourself in this house right now. <laughs> it, it's a lot more daunting when that second and third name is applied. So I have found that it didn't work when I said, Gretchen, quit sniffing. Or Gretchen, come. I said, come. Uh, when I add in Sister Mary Gretchen, her ears perk up. Then they go down and she comes and sits next to me like she's supposed to. So I thought I would share that uh, as the first part of, of what I wanted to talk about, which was my experience with the seeing eye in New Jersey. Uh, I had done research for a long time. Well, I shouldn't say a long time because I've only considered having a seeing eye dog for maybe a year now, maybe a little bit longer. But I got to a point where I realized me using a white cane 
was limiting my independence. Uh, there are people that can use a cane and use it as proficiently as anyone's eyes. And, and they're awesome. It's just like um, anything else. There are people that can, that can run races and win them. And there are people that can barely uh, walk or jog. So there's all of these very variations of people that are able to use a white cane. I, I can explore with my white cane, but I have never been able to achieve the, the mobility that I had when I had mobility vision. And that's both in speed and my confidence in myself. It's, and it's that, that combination. You have to have confidence then to gather enough uh, speed and and agility to to work an environment with a white cane and I'm, there are very many people that I know that do that so eloquently and I was not one of them so when I started researching for uh, guide dogs in general and I, I really zeroed in after some uh, some some reading on the internet and ex exploration, uh, the Seeing Eye Institute in Morristown, New Jersey. It's the oldest school in the country for guide dogs for the blind. And uh, I really liked that idea. And I, I know New Jersey, my, my husband was born and reared in New Jersey. <laughs> He's a huge New York Giants fan, so for people that are, you know, from the Northeast, they, they know exactly what I mean. <clears throat> I have family that lives in New Jersey. Uh, we've traveled there, visited so many times, so that was familiar to me as far as geographics and, and familiarity, so I thought, okay, I will look at seeing eye because of everything I've read about it and everything I have known about it since I was a child and never dreaming that I myself ever, ever would apply for, much less receive a seeing eye dog. And that's exactly what I've done. So last spring I started the application process and that was very simple doing it on the internet. Uh, they make it very simple. I have a very good relationship with my general practitioner doctor, uh, who I see probably twice a year, once a year, twice a year, just for physicals and, and preventive uh, health stuff. So I was able to get in to see my doctor very quickly to get uh, forms completed, and you have to have some vaccinations, and my doctor set all that up, so that went very smoothly for me, and it cut down on a lot of the application time. Uh, I had friends that were immediately willing to write my letters of reference, uh, Martha being one of them that I just mentioned. Uh, Joyce and Pat uh, wrote wonderful letters and got them right in to the Seeing Eye admissions team. And uh, the admissions team contacted me and said, we've gotten all the, the written information, and what we would like to do is send a person to your hometown to visit you. And, and so uh, I knew that was part of the application, but as they were saying it, I was, I, was, I was so nervous because I thought, oh my gosh, a real person is going to actually come and evaluate my skills. And I've always been, I would consider myself an overachiever um, and, and highly competitive. Uh, I was much more competitive when I was in sports, but, and, and, and I'm competitive in a lot of things, but I suddenly got this whole flurry of butterflies saying, oh my gosh, I'm not going to measure up. And, and that's not my nature, but that's just how much I was looking forward to this opportunity, thinking, oh my gosh, what if I don't make it? Or, oh my goodness, what if I do make it? And I, so I set my intention on the fact that I would be going to Morristown. Um, uh, it was in my prayers a lot. Um, and I thought about it a lot, and I envisioned myself 
although I had never, ever, ever touched or um, been allowed to, to experience working with a guide dog of any type. Uh, I've always had cats. I had dogs when I was little, but as an adult, I've, I've always had cats and, you know, we've just been a cat house basically. So I, I still have one elderly cat and, um, but I've never had a dog or taken care of a dog as an adult. And uh, so, so all these things were running through my head and then Ellen came, who was my evaluator, she's a trainer, and she actually flew from New Jersey to Arkansas to see a potential client, and then from Arkansas to Alabama to see mm -hmm. me, and took me, and, and, and she's a brave person because she came in the dead of summer in Alabama, and it was so hot and humid, and Ellen and I walked around my neighborhood, <clears throat> which is a downtown historic district of our city. So I think she evaluated that my surroundings were probably pretty good for a seeing eye dog. And now the next step was to evaluate my mobility skills, my independent mobility skills. And at that point, they weren't mm -hmm. wonderful. I was pretty confident in what I did. It's just that I limited myself to what I did. I didn't explore um, uh, stores on my own. I was usually accompanied by somebody that could see because I would pretty much have to get in a car and go there anyway. And uh, because there, 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 was, there was at that time one grocery store near my home and I could get in and out of that. But other than that, that small... Um, little uh, grocery store, I, you know, clothing stores and, and other kinds of things. I just didn't, you know, order a cab and, or Uber and get in a car and, and go across town to the nearest shopping uh, area and just shop, shop, shop um, independently. I did a lot of that with my daughters, with my husband, with my sister, uh, and with other people. So when I got Gretchen, or when I thought about getting a seeing eye dog, which I wouldn't know who she was, I thought, could this, could this be possible? And Ellen came and she did, she did a, a, an oral interview and then she said, now it's time to go out. And she did a Juno walk with me. And a Juno walk is when she uh, simulates the, the hold of the harness. She holds the harness as if she were the dog leading me and I hold the harness handle just like I would with Gretchen and I hold on and I think she sees perhaps maybe what my gait is, what my speed is, do I have um, issues with that, you know, whatever it is she was looking at and they don't share that with you, they just walk with you and I can't begin to express the feeling even on my Juno walk, when I held on to that mock handle and my speed accelerated and we went around obstacles and we went to our downtown area that I've always wanted to just go and be a part of independently. And Ellen and I went down there and Ellen went around the obstacles and around people and, you know, through tables and chairs and, and to different places. And we were walking at a speed that I haven't walked really since I was in college and walked, you know, two miles to work every day and back. Um, I just couldn't believe that this could even be possible. So, I think at that point my expectations were beyond because I thought, okay, if I can, uh, I hope, I hope I passed this, this test. I, I don't know. They don't really tell you. They just say uh, someone will be in touch with you and it's been, it's been nice visiting you. So I, I was, all I could think of was a seeing eye dog. Uh, my husband and I were preparing to go on a wonderful 
25th wedding anniversary uh, cruise for two weeks in Europe. And uh, luckily I was preparing for that and my mind was on that and and that was exciting. So it kind of got my mind off of the idea that now I'm in the middle of the process of applying for this animal, this seeing eye dog uh, that I've never met and I really don't know a lot about. I just know this is what I'm going to do. And I knew it from the inside out. So um, I explained that, look, we'd be gone out of the country for several weeks of the end of the summertime, beginning of fall, and uh, hopefully I would be hearing from them. And we returned from our, our trip in Europe, and um, within about, I would say about seven days, I got a call from the seeing eye saying, you have been accepted, and uh, your evaluation was great, and we are going to match you with a dog, and we can't tell you when that match will be made, but we have dogs that are training now, and as soon as we find what we think is a good match for you, we will notify you of your start date. And I was, I was elated. It was like someone saying, look, Santa Claus is coming right down the chimney, so you better run out of the room so he can land and fill up the stockings. <laughs> that's what it was like. It was like Christmas to a child that's maybe four or five years old. I was, I was beside myself. Uh, I worked on my cane skills for, for, for several weeks uh, during the early fall, and this was uh, in 2017, so it was just last fall. And then I got the phone call saying, your start date is October 23rd. So I, uh, I had gone from the springtime, I think sometime in April, of doing the application on, online through the uh, obtaining all the records that I had to obtain, the, the visual and the medical records, and the Juno walk with the evaluator from New Jersey, and the team looking and compiling all this information together and making a decision to the actual match with Gretchen. And at this point, I had no idea, you know, I, I, had, I had put on my application, I don't care what breed it is, I knew that seeing I used um, German Shepherds, and they use uh, Labrador Retrievers, and they use Golden Retrievers. And for people with severe allergies, they, they reserve the uh, standard Poodle. And um, so those are the breeds that they use, and I didn't care if it were male or female. I just wanted my seeing eye dog. And I wanted my independence to return. And so the process for me, to me, was on the accelerated path. And I think I, I, I lucked out in that, uh, in that um, area, but the area that I have been truly blessed is to actually get and work with and own and love Gretchen. Sister Mary Gretchen. And so that's, um, that was my experience in the application process. And, you know, I can talk about the training process in my next video, but I wanted everybody to know that it's, uh, it was such a, a, a decisive, um, uh, discerning decision for me and it wasn't taken lightly, and I, I could not be more happy, uh, more satisfied than I am with uh, being one part of this two-part team, which is Gretchen and me, because she's given me so much, so much independence that I never thought I would have again. So if you're, if you're thinking about you know, is, is a guide dog right for me? It's not right for everybody. It's absolutely right for me. Um, and it's, it's amazing, and it's the best thing that, that I have done for myself 
in a long, long time. And, and I'm kind of proud of myself for stepping out of my comfort zone and doing it. And I'll talk about that in my next, in my next video, my comfort zone, because because leaving home and going to training is definitely not in my repertoire of comfort zones. So I guess until I see you next time, thanks for watching everybody and have a great day.